paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Steph is neither fully male nor female, but intersex. Maybe you could put your hand down. Most people have heard of the word hermaphrodite. And we just say intersex. It's the modern word for hermaphrodite. Because hermaphrodite's a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> With physical features of both genders, as many as 100,000 people in Britain can be described as intersex. Well, you want some more? Do you want to take one of the... Get off your breast. Am I a man or am I a woman? I don't know. And both. And ask any intersex person to tell you the same thing. Intersexuality has long been shrouded in secrecy. But now people like Steph are speaking out about the difficulties of growing up and living between sexes. In this film, we follow three people coming to terms with Kleinfelter syndrome, the most common of all intersex conditions. It won't let me take a mm. photograph if, yeah. unless it's. Unless it claims to be in focus. I look like a male. I know. I look, I look like a male, I behave like a male, and I dress like a male because that's the gender I've been brought up in. Right. To all intents and purposes, that's the gender I was born into. However, I know I'm not male. Kleinfelter's syndrome is a chromosomal anomaly that affects around one in 500 men. Yet because of the taboo surrounding intersexuality, it's little known and vastly underdiagnosed. Steph's photos are for an internet support group he runs for others who, like him, have XXY sex chromosomes. And this is a typical XXY scrotum. You need a magnifying glass to find anything. So, where are the testicles? The testicles. There's one there, and there's one there. And they're about the size, roughly the size of a butter bean. I just tell people I've got no balls, because you can't see them. When people say, what's, what size are you? I'll say, small dick, no balls. <laughs> Right? And if they still want to talk to you, then they're worth talking to you. <laughs> I, I was never bothered by the fact that I had no balls, or tiny ones. Right? It did not bother me in the least. It was the size of my penis. All through my life, the fact that I had a small penis drove me to the edge of suicide. Right? Because it was tiny. But then you're talking, when, when fully erect, about an inch and a half. Usually, a baby inherits 23 chromosomes from each parent. These pair off and form its genetic blueprint. The last pair, 45 and 46, determine its sex. XX for a female, XY for a male. With Kleinfelters, however, an XY baby boy is born with one or more additional X chromosomes, and the line between male and female begins to blur. I've got no hair in my legs, that's another thing. People used to ask me, do you shave your legs? Do you wax your legs? No, nope, it's all natural. 
<laughs> Is that another aspect of the intersex condition? Yeah, kind of patterns, yeah. Yeah. Lack of testosterone. The consequences of an extra X sex chromosome can vary enormously. Although most men with Kleinfelters lead relatively normal lives, for a few the effects are so profound they literally see themselves as caught between sexes. We are physically and psychologically both genders, or feel both genders. I don't have an Adam's apple like a man has. I've got very soft skin, I don't have any body hair, and I had very small testes. I also have one internal ovary mm. organ. You see, and mine? But it doesn't work. Mm. But mine? There's nothing connects to nothing, it's just there. Yeah. One ovary. Yeah. One. Yeah. Although Paula and Andrea were born with male genitalia, at puberty they failed to masculinize. Instead, like around half of boys with Kleinfelters, they grew breasts and their bodies became increasingly androgynous. Both are now more comfortable living as women. Being an intersex person, I'm more female now, but psychologically, Yes, there's some certain aspects there that, yes, I know what a man can be thinking. All this is a part of being a one person, being feminine, but also being masculine as well. We've got a little display of this very steam engines of the classes. They even work. I've got one here that works. That's it there, like that. And the motion goes round and has the, has the um, light on and what have you, and it's it just like a proper statement of coming to a station. This is the lounge. Um, we've got Andrea sitting here. So how would you describe your relationship? Very close, good friends. Close, close friends. friends. Very like very two close big sisters. Older sister, younger sister. It's simple as that, you know. We actually met at Newcastle for a hospital appointment and it just went from there. We share our lives as close friends. Stop. That's it. There's nothing sexual. Like others with Kleinfelter syndrome, Andrea has small testes. But uniquely, she also has one ovary, and in medical terms is a true hermaphrodite, an extremely rare form of the condition. You never will be 100% female, and you never will be 100% male. Yes, there's flowers, yes, there's feminine things around the house, um, but it's, it's mainly, it's like polar steam trains, aircraft. Um, it's just, you never get rid of that other side of you. You never can. It's always part of you. It always will be part of my life. Do you see the world differently now you, you live as a woman? <laughs> totally differently. It's amazing the way people treat you, even on the road. Blokes treat you differently. They'll cut in front of you. You come to park the car. In a parking space, they'll nip around and try and push in front of you from the opposite direction. You know, it's, it's total different. Are you a gangster, you old woman? Typical, Andrew. That's typical. Yeah. It's typical of most of them. Mm. It, it, it doesn't bother us now. 
Um, it's only when they start coming up to you really close and start setting you and you start getting physical does it start to worry you. But the distance there we're at, the comments that we're shouting, doesn't bother me anymore mm. at all. Mm. So we'll see what happens. Coming back. Best to get out of the way. Just leave them to calm down for half an hour and mm. something else will happen and it'll be old news. So mm. we'll just leave them for half an hour. See what happens from there. Really? Steph has an extra X sex chromosome, a condition known as Kleinfelter syndrome. Like Down syndrome, another chromosomal anomaly, Kleinfelters isn't inherited. Nevertheless, both are more common in children of older mothers. When Steph and his brother George, who has Downs, were born, their mother was already well into her forties. They're making a television programme. Yeah. I'm going to be on television. Come to sit down. Yeah. Do you talk to George about your client filters? No. I'm just straight off his head. Just. <laughs> he knows I go with men. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you? Yeah. I have boyfriends instead of girlfriends. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of that? All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. When I get a boyfriend, I'll invite you to the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I need a best man. Several years ago, I almost went through the equivalent of a wedding to another man. Right? Not, nothing legal, of course just the ceremony part of it. George knew Kenny. We went for a walk and I said to him, Kenny and I are getting married. And he said, oh. Still catches me there. He said to me, can I be your best man? He doesn't understand that at all. He did say to me, that's daft. You should have a girlfriend, but so what? Nice to see you. Yeah. OK. Right, so. As the youngest of 12 in a staunchly Catholic family, growing up with Kleinfelter syndrome was tough for Steph. This is my primary school, St. Unin's. St. Unin's, nicknamed St. Onions. <laughs> I would be around the age of nine um, when I started to think that you know, what is it about me that I'm so different from them? They used to ask me why I had a squeaky voice, and they used to imitate my squeaky voice. And of course, when we went to the swimming pool, that gave them something else to comment on. One of the favourite taunts was, what's a penis? Right? And I always thought they were saying, what's a pianist? And of course, my answer would be somebody who plays the piano. Of course, they'd all fall over laughing. And I had no clue what they were laughing about. It isn't clear why having an extra X sex chromosome leads to underdeveloped testicles. I think we should flatten this and start again. What is known is that in most cases, the testes don't produce enough testosterone for normal male puberty. 
my genitalia was tiny. You know, I make jokes about having difficulty finding my genitalia, but when I was 14, that was true. Because my penis retracts inside my body. It still doesn't now. Um, sometimes when I close my legs, what I see is a woman's vagina. And you think, well, what, what's going on here? With very low levels of testosterone, the female hormone oestrogen gains a dominant role. I must have been about 16. I went to my GP and I said, I've got breasts. I didn't actually say it. I didn't say it. I just took my, I just took my shirt and I went, mate, what can be done about this? And he said, you know, who goes, mate? I wanted to walk on the beach with my shirt off. But I couldn't do that because people were saying, oh, look at him, he's got tits. Years ago when I came up to Newcastle on the bus here, this young boy said, uh, Mummy, is it a boy or is it a girl? And the mum said, well, I don't really know because angels are sexless, you see. I just thought, well, yes, it looks like an intersex angel. And it could OK be an intersex person. A person's sense of gender is determined in part by the mix of male and female hormones flowing through their body. Therefore, low levels of testosterone may explain why some XXYs experience confusion over their gender. It started really like 11 year old when mum caught me with a pair of her tights on. I got one of the tight legs off and I still had one part on and mum put, put her head round the corner and said, what are you doing with those on? Get them up and come downstairs and we won't hear any more about it. So mother had an inkling from 11 year old. I was a young man, but I felt I was a young woman because when I left school, I started dressing in girls' clothes properly. I was living as half and half, literally. How did sex work then? I mean, were you sexually functioning? I felt I could, OK, masturbate like, like a boy um, I got sexual arousal from it. Uh, it wasn't everlasting, shall we say. Sometimes I did, sometimes I didn't. Uh, but every time I did that, I felt that I was a woman. I had these women's feelings. Kleinfelters can lead to a whole host of problems both physical and psychological. Paula and Andrea now run a support group called Crossroads. Today they're talking to local police officers about harassment and the difficulties of living with intersexuality. OK, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for coming. I'd just like to introduce uh, Paula here and Andrea. I heard you talk to us this afternoon about intersex issues and also about their organisation. Thank okay. you, Paula. Thank you, Mick. The Kleinfelters has all sorts of problems. Um, we both started off as boys, uh, had, but being brought up in childhood as boys, went to boys' school. It was difficult. The genitalia it was small. It didn't grow as I expected, although I do have body hair, which is masculine. And... Uh, you know, it's, it's just little changes like that that I had, but I didn't really masculinise down below. Things started to come out when I was about 20, 25. I actually felt female. Um, 
you know, and I wanted to be female, but I didn't know how to tell anybody. Did you feel different in yourself straight away then, or, or did people make you feel different? <laughs> I, felt, I felt different when I was about seven years old. Um, I mixed more with girls. Yeah, I liked hanging around the brownies, <laughs> things <laughs> like that. But majority had girlfriends. <laughs> girlfriends. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Were you attracted to women? Not really, no. I mean, I used to look at them, but I only looked at them for the clothes they were wearing and how they were wearing them. During the working week, I lived as a man. After that, it was female. Weekends, as much as I could, total weekend where possible. It actually led to depression. You were on a high when you were going out like that. And when you had to change back to being a man, you just sunk to the depths of depression. You think intersexual people stay single? No, they don't. Uh, they can marry. Uh, they can form a, some sort of relationship. I actually got married. And I was with my partner 13 and a half years. But I had to explain to her about my physical being, which she accepted. You know, I'm different. I met this woman. She was the same age as me. And um, somehow, uh, the male side of me, psychologically, um, sort of kicked in. I'd just like to thank you both for that. Hopefully everybody's a little bit more aware now. Where's the team biscuits? Where's the team biscuits? Where's the team biscuits? Where's the team biscuits? When you come round, never please think you've got team biscuits. Like many men with Kleinfelters, it was infertility that finally led Paul, as he was then, to a diagnosis. We were trying to have children. And she was fine with all the tests. They did tests on me and they found I had a virtually nil m sperm count. I had to go and see my GP. He said, I don't really know how to say this, but you've got what you call an ambiguous Kleinfeld syndrome, I said. What? Kleinfeld? What's that? Andrea, or Andrew as he was then, was in his 30s and a qualified electrical engineer by the time doctors stumbled upon his true condition. It was actually when I was working abroad and took ill. That's when I found out I had Kleinfelders. I thought at the time it was like a transsexual, but no, I'm actually an intersex. It explained a lot of things, why I didn't develop the way I did, the way I felt. I quite like the shape around the front. Yeah, it's different, a little bit different. When I look back on it, and when I mentioned it to people, they said, well, yes, we, we could see the problems you had. I was married for 13 and a half years. But when my partner died of ovarian cancer. I had to really make a very big decision. Should I live as Paul? Or become Paula? says he was somewhat but not grossly shy at school. He has not yet developed sexual hair and has no interest in the opposite sex at present. He is overweight at 14 stones but denies being teased on this account as he sorted out anyone at school who did. Kleinfelter's syndrome is the most common of chromosomal disorders to affect men. Yet it's outside most GPs experience and is often missed. Although Steph was dogged by illness and his apparent androgyny, 
It wasn't until his late twenties that tests finally revealed his condition. This doctor came in that I'd never met before. He sat down and he said to me, how's your sex life? Right, and that just threw me away. That blew me away, right? Because this is a subject we don't talk about. Mm. Oh, there we go. Let's read it. <clears throat> Further to doctors and letter, Mr. Toner has had a chromosome analysis and repeat endocrine tests. The chromosome analysis is consistent with Kleinfelter's disease. And he said to me, I'm really sorry, I thought you knew. He said, when we were doing the last lot of blood tests for your headaches, right, we found something else. This makes me feel angry, because you've got Kleinfelter's disease. Because Kleinfelter's isn't a disease. <laughs> he then proceeded to say, Kleinfelter's syndrome is a very rare condition. You've got small testes, well, I knew that already. <laughs> um, you're infertile. And then he said to me, of course, most people with Kleinfelter syndrome lead a perfectly normal life. So we're giving you 150 milligrams. Yeah. Do you want to get your cell organised then? I'll come over and give you this. Following diagnoses, doctors prescribed the male hormone testosterone. Are you steady at that? Yeah, I'll just hold on to this. Yeah, are you sure now? Yes. At the age of 27, Steph began the puberty he never had as a teenager. So which side are we going on? Right. Right. You ready? Yep. Are you quite steady? Yep. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Steph, if you don't have a testosterone, what, what happens to you? I'll go into a very deep depression and just stay there. And all the antidepressants in the world would make no difference. OK? Yep. All right. Not sure. It also presumably masculinises. Oh, yeah. Give me um, facial hair. I had facial hair for the first time when I was... I must have been about 37. <laughs> After starting with testosterone? Yeah. yeah. You OK, then? Yeah. Having Kleinfelters helps explain many of the ailments Steph suffers from, such as migraines and diabetes. Great, thank Hi. you. Another week. Another week. <laughs> In recent years, yeah. he's also developed a mysterious muscle-wasting disease, which he believes may also be connected. Okay, then. Right, okay. Bye. Paula and Andrea don't see themselves as transvestites or transsexuals, but intersex. Nevertheless, their group also supports local transsexuals, who, like them, want to transition physically to a female role. Well, Andrew's sort of doing a little bit of chopping, you know, I, I must get on and do the, the boopy. Well, I'll only be about 10 minutes quiet, but you know me, you know, fast. I wanted to be a woman physically. I couldn't live as a woman with breasts that were fully formed or nearly fully formed and have a penis and testes. I couldn't do that. After the death of his wife, Paul decided to have surgery and complete his change to Paula. First of all, they do an orchidectomy. That means taking the testes out of the scrotal sac. Ladies, what would you like to drink? Red wine, rosé and white. And then they take off the uh, penal skin. The gazunda. The penal skin would be joined on to the scrotal skin 
to fashion uh, a vagina. But, like a lot of intersex people, I didn't have much tissue. So, I've got only a small vagina. It's about that, by about that wide. Cheers, cheers, cheers. English wine, you can't beat English wine. It's quite nice, actually. I'm now more on the female side than the male side. But I'm still, like, sitting on on the fence with one leg over, if you know what I mean. Although Andrea is waiting for surgery, she's already begun hormone treatment to further her feminization. The hormones have softened me already soft skin. I had a pack of tissues in here once. They've changed the shape of my face slightly. And I've developed breasts with them. And of course, taking the anti-androgen has made the genitalia even smaller. So, in real terms, there's no going back for me. In contrast to Paula and Andrea, after diagnoses, Steph sought treatment to affirm his masculinity. This is a pair of Kleinfelter breasts after surgery. How big were they before? Um, they were about twice that size. So she did twice. <laughs> uh, the, the strange thing is, having had the liposuction, I actually missed them. I mean, you know, so desperate to get rid of them at the time. But now that I've become educated, on the subject, I, I now wish I'd have kept them. Just to add, just to put the icing on the cake. Yeah, another problem I have is I'm impotent. But at least I get Viagra on prescription. <laughs> <laughs> Except they don't give me enough. So I'm limited to four a month. I can have sex four times a month. Because I've got, because I'm on testosterone replacement, my libido dictates that I could quite happily have sex four times a day. Except I don't have the energy. The will is there, but the, <laughs> the energy is inefficient. And chance would be a fine thing anyway. I can't go into a gay bar and pick someone up because I run the risk of being humiliated. Gay men are obsessed with penis size. Absolutely. You know, if you don't have at least six inches, you're no good to me. Look at that. That's nice. I'm going to put that in my ear. Aye, I'll put that in your ear. I use the internet. Um, and I also have... I've also used um, personal services. Queen Victoria didn't believe that such a thing could happen between two women. I wonder if Queen Victoria herself had ever partaken. <laughs> Do you think you being gay is connected to you being Kleinfelters? Yeah, I would say there's there's probably something in it, and it'll probably take science another hundred years to find the link, but they, they will find it. Well, they tied him to a tree and did it, and ended up in prison. Do you see yourself as a gay man or someone who's innocent? <laughs> I ident identify myself as someone who's intersex. Who's also gay. Wrap it up and you've got queer. Why queer? It's just a word that people, people like me have adopted. <gasps> Thank you.
It is cosmetic, but you, one can have a functioning vagina. Okay, people might turn around and say, well, have you had a sexual relationship as a woman? The answer is, once. And it hurt. It really did hurt. And uh, I, I said, never again. Uh, a lot of people's eyes would probably pop out the head, and, well, you know, like that. But, but no, it did hurt. If I did want a relationship with anybody, it's hard. How do you explain you're half male, half female? I think you've got to pick where your you pub go. where you go. Yeah. When I go into pubs and that on my own, which is very infrequent, I quite often get chatted up. How do you refuse and how do you say it politely? It's one of these things where I sort of have a wedding and engagement ring on. People don't sort of ask you when they see that. To be honest, men are dangerous. You, you just can't tell one man from the other. Are you attracted to men? I am. Did you ever think of yourself as gay? No, I didn't. I just couldn't see that as being me at all. I always felt female. Miss Ryder, Paula Ryder. I rang in with a problem last night. Uh, we were leaving um, my house. It was myself, Andrea Marshall, my friend. And we got a load of abuse from local users. And... All right. Okay, thanks very much. Thanks, bye. Right, the coming, but he's, he's, he's getting somebody to come out between half past 12 and half past two. We all piled into Helen's car and Yvonne took her own car, reversing round to go out. Mm -hmm. All we've got is a heck of a lot of abuse from them. You know, just saying virtually tranny, transvestite, uh, puff queer, the uh, usual verbal abuse that we always get. So the verbal abuse last night, you say, what time did, did that happen? I was about 20 to 8. Can you give us the description? One was tall and lanky, uh, short dark hair. A uh, small one was blondish with uh, freckly face. Uh, between what? 13 and 16. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, a barbecue or a garden party type thing, anyhow. Bye. Since learning of each other's existence through this film, Paula, Andrea and Steph decided they'd like to meet and compare notes about Kleinfelter's syndrome. Because Kleinfelter's is little understood by most doctors, diagnoses have led all three to learn as much as possible about their condition. I was diagnosed at 27, but I didn't know until 11 years later mm. when mm. I went to America. Mm. That's what not, Kleinfelter's that's was. We have from mine in America. <laughs> not, not in this yeah. country. No, that's no. When I took it was even in America that I found out there was an organisation in Britain. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, um, I don't feel like I don't. I, I don't feel 100% male, I don't feel 100% female. Right, yes. You see, with Kleinfelter syndrome, I'm still learning all the time. Mm -hmm. you, you can go that's, what the kind, that's what Kleinfelter The impact of an extra X chromosome goes beyond affecting sexual development and often leads to varying degrees of learning difficulty. 
All three have dyslexia and problems with memory. The memory loss with Klein felt as a link. Oh, the memory loss is dreadful. I know. <laughs> yeah. Do <laughs> oh, you go wall. into the room, into the kitchen, and say, several times, and say, "What are we coming here for?" Yeah. 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 I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Do exaggeration. I, I can take the car out. I'll go. Where, where am I going? Where have I parked it? That's the favourite one. <laughs> <laughs> so you go to confession, and you have to tell the priest all the sins you've committed the previous week. Mm. Now, when you've got a bad memory. That's mm. difficult. I know. I mean, it is, yeah. So you have to make them up. <laughs> yeah, I like, I like that. You know? yeah. uh, anyway, so, okay then. That's it. I'm, I'm, right I'm six foot and a half. Without my People with Kleinfelters also tend to put on weight around the waist and hips and to be tall and long limbed. Kleinfelters go for about five, eight upwards. Yeah. You know. I know in Kleinfelters you'll be the tallest of all your siblings. I know. Mm -hmm. and I've got long arms. Of all my You've got long, have you got long arms? Like me? Yeah. <laughs> well, long, long arms. You know, like that. Bigger hands. Small hands. hands. What size feet hands. have you got? <laughs> oh, God, here we are. Oh, that's it, like. That's it, yeah. Yeah. No, I've got, I've got bigger hands. No more hands, your Yeah, that's right. You know. I've uh, got a big head as well. <laughs> Come on, just be nice again. Okay. Oh, you look after yourself, Andrew. And it's nice to know there's somebody else around. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll have to come to Bishop Auckland. Yeah. yeah, you'll have come to. Down. You'll have, have to come down. Yeah. You know, all like that. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's great. Bye. Bye. Oh, God. Open the Oh, they were out there last night, well, uh, ten past two this morning, well, catching frogs, kids. Yeah. What again? Yes, Kept 13, 14 year old, they woke me up, catching right. frogs. I was more concerned what they were doing with the frogs, you know, Andrew. I, was, I really was, I couldn't get back to sleep. Yeah, I know, I know. 13, I've just been telling the daughter's uh, mum, daughter-in-law's mum. Yeah, and she said, about she the problem. never in the world. I was a 13, 14 year old, I looked out the window. Yeah. Oh, born. born right, okay. okay then. Thanks See you later. Bye. See you later. Bye. <laughs> yeah. This is my, this is not me since I've been here. I've been very supportive. That's the best about my neighbours here. They're supportive and they're very helpful. And, aren't they? Really? Yeah. Most Kleinfelters live as men. That's their decision. That's how they want to live. There's only a small amount who feel they want to live as women. It's how you feel within yourself, how, what you feel comfortable with, um, psychologically, physically. If you want to be a woman, yes, be, OK, go for it. But if you want to be a man and stay a man, that's your option. For Paula, the final stage in her transition to living as a woman is a legal one. She's attempting to have the sex recorded on her birth certificate altered to read F for female. Your claim was that there was an error of fact or substance made uh, at the time of your birth. The registrar recorded a historical fact hmm. which it had to be conceded was correct right. because at the time of your birth uh, you, you were uh, seen to be uh, male. The judge who heard the uh, application showed a great deal of uh, support and sympathy uh, mm. for your application, mm. but felt that he was bound by the uh, statute mm. that the Registrar General was correct in not altering your birth certificate uh, si simply because the registration at the time of birth was correct. Baby is uh, looked at you either have male genitals or female genitals, you're one or the other, registration of birth follows. Since XXY babies appear male, medical opinion in Britain is still divided as to whether it's a true intersex condition.
and this may have counted against Paula. Intersex people like ourselves feel that they're neither, neither male or female. But Paula plans to appeal. And in Australia, at least, there's a precedent. A man with Kleinfelters has successfully had his birth certificate changed to say I for intersex. My uh, view on it is that they were referring back to the original statute yes. of the registration That's of right. births. That once you are registered, mm. you are, That's it. you know, as registered. That's right. You are either male or female. Mm. There's mm. no in between. I don't see myself as either a man or a woman. I just feel I'm both. Because I've been brought up male. It's all intents and purposes, that's why I am. But underneath a mask, which is my clothes, I'm different. <laughs> yeah, no one look at me and say he's intersex, but intersex can't be seen. The only way to truly understand intersex is if you're intersex. Because it's in, yeah, it's in the head, it's in, it's hormonal, it's in your head, it's in your genes. How do you see your future? <laughs> I don't, I try not to think about the future. I live, live for today. Certainly today's better than yesterday. And tomorrow can only be better from my effort. Where do you see yourself ten years' time when you're 50? <laughs> probably still here, probably still screaming at doctors. Um, but at least I've got a comfortable life which is something I thought I'd never have. In fact, life is something I thought I once thought I'd never have. I can't see myself ever going back as, to live as Andrew. I mean, I cannot. That black bag? Yeah. No, since I... Sort of transitioned, discovered about Kleinfeld is. It's a total different life. It's great. I wouldn't have done half the things I've done as Andrea is Andrew. I've never been happier. So my whole life has changed, and for the better. When I was living as Paul, I was very withdrawn. I couldn't interact with people. I couldn't run a support group. I couldn't talk. I couldn't talk to you. Now, be filmed. Yeah, we're taking pictures of the film crew now, aren't we? <laughs> now, I can talk to you. Yeah, that's good. Now, lovely. I've got an awful lot of confidence. Right, lovely. And for a strange little quirk about this, my family said, it's a pity you didn't do this years ago. 